right, betting above the rim here on a Saturday morning, a fine Saturday morning, a glorious Saturday, one might even say. When we're kicking it here on SportsGrid, 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern time, John James, James Young going to be here just in a few minutes with me for the entire full (coughs) two hours here on this Saturday morning. But there is so much for us to get to on this fine betting above the rim here. And a lot of superstars finding some new homes, some superstars inking up new deals with their old homes some some old faces staying in the same places but for some large sums of money as we will detail so a ton for us to break down here and we're going to do it all we're going to go all around the association give you the trade news you need to know big free agency names of course a quick look at the WNBA summer league some places that you can make some money during this NBA offseason and we're going to do it right here right now in our opening tip All right, so first things first, and we will bring James Young on in just a few minutes. We do have to talk about some of the biggest news that we saw yesterday. Breaking yesterday afternoon, Damian Lillard agreeing to a two-year contract or two-year contract extension with the Portland Trailblazers worth $122 million. How about that number? That's what I call a payday. Two years, $122 million for Damian Lillard to stay with the Portland Trail Blazers, and it includes a player option for the 2026-2027 season, which will be the last portion of that deal. And it's something that we could have came to expect from Damian Lillard, who throughout his tenure and throughout his career has maintained his loyalty to the Portland Trail Blazers, consistently proving himself to be one of the most loyal players in the NBA. And now he's got the bag to show for it. What a massive contract there for Damian Lillard. And the Portland Trail Blazers have made some moves this offseason. They brought in Jeremy Grant. They do have some depth as they uh, re-sign Yusuf Yusuf Nurkic as well to an extension so we're going to see if the trailblazers can make some noise in that western conference under chauncey billups now their second year head coach and we're going to wait and see what the portland trailblazers do but elsewhere in the western conference some other teams are making some pushes forward and that's namely the new orleans pelicans finally yesterday the details coming out about the new orleans extension with with uh zion williamson after the end of his rookie deal there the the extension is going to be worth 193 million dollars it comes out for uh zion williamson there and i mean that's a young player who deserves to get paid and he's someone who in my opinion is well worth that investment if you are the new orleans pelicans i mean zion williamson has proven last year alone he averaged 27 points per game on over 60 percent shooting those are shaquille o'neal numbers and I think nowadays, you know, we're seeing a lot with the max contract extension. It gets given out rather easily, some people might say. But I don't think there's any doubt in anyone's mind that Zion Williamson, one of the premier young players in this league who still has a ton of upside, and when he has been healthy, he has shown the ability to absolutely dominate at almost a superstar level so early on in his career. I think that is someone who is certainly going to be worth looking at for that long-term extension so Zion back with the Pelicans Damian Lillard back with the Blazers and of course we saw Bradley Beal last week also re-inking with the with the Washington Wizards so Beal's sticking around there in Washington and then a few other names signing some large deals Zach Levine was up there as we welcome in our radio audience here on Sports Grid TV, Sports Grid Radio, Sirius XM Channel 159. You got John Shames here betting above the rim here on a Saturday morning, 10, 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern time. Almost said 12 to noon. That was the old time slot. We're in a new time slot, and we are absolutely kicking it. Right now, talking about some of the contract extensions that we have seen around the NBA. And yesterday, the big story was Damian Lillard re-signing with the Portland Trail Blazers, first and foremost, two years, $122 million. Just a move that, you know, we'll get JY's thoughts on this at some point, but I'm not mad at it, if I'm being honest with you, because Portland, they're locking up their guy. Damian Lillard gets an extra $60 million a year to mess around with. No one's going to be upset about that. And then I like the idea that it's just an, a two-year extension, right? You know, of course, Dame does have a few years left on his current deal, But, you know, given just that two-year commitment, I think it's some time for Dame to say, put some better pieces around me. We'll see how this Jeremy Grant trade does for the Portland Trail Blazers. We'll see how how that that squad goes around him. But 
I have got my eyes on Portland here as we enter the next season as a team to watch out for, maybe as one of the eight or seven or eight seeds in that Western Conference. And now we get a man's thoughts on this who I know has plenty of them because I know that he has been watching what's been going on with these stars re-inking with their current teams. And we had, we had a long discussion about Bradley Beal last week, but Coach JY joins the program now. Coach, we got about a minute here in this segment. What are your thoughts on this Damian Lillard extension that we saw break yesterday? CMB, cash money brother. <laughs> the brother getting that back. I mean, he got that bag. And shout out to him getting that money because for me as a coach, I always want these players to get what they need to help their family. But it sets himself up for only two years with the extension. And with Portland, yes, they've put together some pieces Shade and Sharp, Jeremy Grant. Now they got Josh Hart for the full year. They re-signed Nurkic. This is a team, folks, that should be in that top, probably you're right, James, 7-8 slot in no loaded Western Conference, but a hell of a lot better than what they were last year. That is for sure, J.Y. 120 to 1 right now are the Portland Trailblazers. We'll talk to J.Y. about his thoughts on Zion as well, but some KD talk after the break. Keep it right here. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rail. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? Let's see how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full to circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for And them. Diamond being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose, too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game live. Prime time. He plays time. like he did in game five. They are going to be all good in game six at home. Boy, boy you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The Bostonian versus the book. Staff, an extra person, when Hawaii was at home oh. on the island, when they would play those Saturday night games, you know, it was it was singled out, right? It wouldn't start here till the degenerate nine or special. 10. It's the degenerate special. It's the get right game of the get right games. I mean, always screw Monday night football. Hawaii football late night is the get right game of the entire weekend. The Bostonian versus the book. The Pat McAfee Show. All these little aliens land, and every ex-football player says, they got no jaw. Oh, <laughs> put a helmet on and just start spearing people. It would feel good to make a few tackles. Oh, back in the day tackles, too. You got Ed Reed flying. <laughs> yeah. Troy Paul Ma, I go, boom. Oh. AJ just leading with the head, everybody. I mean, the future looks bright for us humans. Hey, let's go, humans. Yeah. Come on. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Fest Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Women entering sports books more than ever before. 4.5 million increased overall year over year and about 115% increase in women entering the sports book. Men still outnumber women 250%, but women are making up ground. Some say they're placing their husbands or their boyfriends' bets. That's not really true when you look at it empirically. More and more women sports fans are getting into the game and putting their money up to be able to generate some significant income. And FanDuel has generated more uh, women entries than ever before, 1.7 million, and the number continues to rise. So look for betting on all sports across the board. Ironically, you'll see the women in the same number as female sponsorship products, football first, basketball second. It follows a familiar trend. Sports professor Rick Haro, Daily Numbers Game.
All right, we are cooking here on this Saturday morning. Shames and James here for Betting Above the Rim here on Sports Grid TV, Sirius XM, Channel 159. You're watching all across your OTT platforms. Thank you for tuning in this morning. We got so much to get into right now. So, JY, let's not waste any time. Quickly, I do want to get your thoughts on a little bit of what we talked about last segment. Zion Williamson officially signing his $193 million extension could pay upwards of $230 million if everything hits in that contract. JY, how do you feel about the Pelicans locking up their young star? Compared to where they were a year ago, Shane, so we didn't know if he even wanted to be there, pretty darn good. You know, the way they turned that season around the second half after getting C.J. McCollum and how they've played down the stretch, even going to six games with Phoenix, you bring a healthy Zion back with Valanchunas, with B.I., with C.J. at the point. You know, you have yourself a two-guard, and then we'll bring guys like Herbert Jones, you know, and uh, the other kid from um, uh, Virginia off the bench, Trey Murphy. That's a good starting unit and a good young unit that's got years to grow. So, shout out to the Pelicans. David Griffin held firm, didn't panic, not having Zion this whole year. The team progressed. Now you integrate him properly into the organization. Willie Green's got something there cooking there down in, in New Orleans, and we ain't talking about no jambalaya. <laughs> J.Y., you're always coming in with the food references. You absolutely love to see it. And I do echo your sentiment. Willie Green is doing a tremendous job. I think it is his third year now with the Pelicans, and he's really done so much for them. They have a lot of talent going into this season, and I'm still holding out a little bit of hope that they can make some magic happen and maybe a potential Kevin Durant sweepstakes getting involved there, maybe sending Brandon Ingram over there to the Brooklyn Nets. I know J.Y. knows what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. We would both love to see that, J.Y., but, yeah, I love what New Orleans is doing. Really awesome stuff. Let's bring our attention quickly to some guys who are still out there as notable free agents and maybe at the top of that list, J.Y., and a guy who has averaged 20 points per game in his career, Colin Sexton, still out there right now, but we're hearing there's really no market for the point guard from the, from the Cleveland Cavaliers, and I'm not sure, J.Y., I think Colin Sexton is a guy who we're still a little bit shaky on his fit, you know, he's not a guy that you can just plug and play. He's a ball-dominant player who does not really have the most reliable jump shot. I do love his slashing ability. And, of course, we know Cleveland did bring in Karis Levert as well. So, interested to see if they can incorporate both of them in the lineup. But, J.Y., is Colin Sexton not getting any fair shake in the free agency market right now? It's a tough market. You know, because you figure, if you look at the point guards, it was Brunson and, and then maybe Sexton. I mean, but if you look at it, the teams don't have the cap space. And, you know, a team like the Cavs, they're pretty well set. Here, here's Sexton's biggest problem. Let's be honest. Darius Garland. Because two years ago, people said they couldn't play together. Well, what happens? Sexton gets injured. Garland goes off. Cleveland ascends. And now people are looking at Sexton like, well, bro, maybe you are the problem here. So his market has diminished. The best thing for him to do is, is to go back to Cleveland, see if this two-point guard attack can work, or come off the bench as a, as a, as a big-time six-man that can score and distribute and see if that accelerates, accelerates your, your value, and then maybe you can get moved at the deadline or in a year. So look to see Colin Sexton to go back to Cleveland. Yeah, I would not be surprised by that. And it kind of does seem just how the market has been thus far that that is going to be where Colin Sexton ends up. Joey, a couple other names on that list that we can talk about before we move on to DeAndre and probably the biggest name that's still available, although there's a lot of debate up for up there. But Eric Bledsoe is still out there right now. Carmelo Anthony. DeMarcus Cousins, Dennis Schroeder. Some of these guys, JY, you know, some, some big names, let's say. Unclear how much value they're bringing to an NBA team now. Is anyone besides the Lakers going to take a flyer on any of these dudes, you think? <laughs> oh, you got the stank face. Why, 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 why are you bringing up those dudes? You got dudes? the stank face. I mean, I mean, I mean, are we talking about, like, you know, Jagged Edge and Ja Rule and some of you know, 50 Cent? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about when those guys were popular – some of these guys were still in their prime. But, oh. listen, I really do think it's one of those things where uh, they're going to have to see what happens. Uh, veterans, minimums, but teams want to fill up their rosters first. 
before they go to that. Yeah, I, I feel like DeMarcus Cousins has kind of just been all around the, the league for the past couple of years, J.Y. He's on like three different teams this season. And then you see a guy like Dennis Schroeder, too, who's also been traded like four or five times. Not a lot of staying power for these individuals that are left. So I do agree with you in that I think it's going to be one of these situations where you just bring someone in on a vet min, take a flyer on him. If they give you some good production, great. If not, you move on. But JY, some of the really big story, or one of the really big stories this week, I should say, has been us monitoring what's been going on with DeAndre Ayton, who right now a lot for the Phoenix Suns depends on what decision he makes as it pertains to his restricted free agency. If he signs an offer sheet somewhere else, their whole Kevin Durant trade could unravel, or potential Kevin Durant trade could unravel JY. So the, the Phoenix Suns, I think, are, are, you know, I don't know if they're, if that relationship is busted beyond repair where they feel like they can bring DeAndre Ayton back in. I'm guessing they're trying to convince DeAndre Ayton that he's going to look really good as a Brooklyn Net and trying to convince him to, to you know, sign with, with the Nets there in a potential signing trade. What do you think here? Well, of course, bro, because if they can go ahead and move him and let's say a Bridges, um, and listen, uh, those two knuckleheads on Fox Sports, Okay, listen, Mikel plays for the Suns. Miles plays for the Hornets. Don't worry, I'll address you Not two anymore. later on this hour. You're right about that. We'll address you guys later in this hour. But if you could, yeah. if you could put Bridges along with Aiton to go over to Brooklyn for KD, of course, if you're you know, the Suns, you would like to work out this sign and trade him and, and move him over as part of a deal. You thought Detroit at some point. But, you know, they got Duran in the draft. They think they like the pieces around them. Keep an eye on Indiana, folks. They have the money. They can go get them. Maybe an Aiton for Miles Turner swap because we know mm -hmm. Turner's been on the block. That would be an interesting trade, James, that really would help both teams. Aiton will go become the centerpiece of what they, what they would need uh, in Indiana. And with a nice team with Duarte and Matherin, who had a really good start to summer league, and then if he, if you guy like Miles Turner goes to Phoenix, shot blocker, check, rebounder, check, but more of a stretch five, which may be better for a team like Phoenix, which creates driving lanes for those guys to score. Yeah, JY, that would be an awesome fit. I don't. You know, the Miles Turner thing, it makes a lot of sense to me just from a perspective of Miles Turner has been seemingly on his way out the door from Indiana for multiple seasons now. But you got to wonder, you know, that that price to me, it's an interesting one, J.Y. I mean, DeAndre Ayton seems to have a lot of value around the league right now, especially as it pertains to a Kevin Durant trade. So we'll see what happens with that. And speaking of a Kevin Durant trade, J.Y., I'm sure you saw this. The Nets engaged the Timberwolves on a potential KD trade. They asked for Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, and four first-round picks, J.Y. Four first-round picks on top of your two number one overall picks that you already have. That's a freaking ridiculous asking price for me. I can't even justify that for Kevin Durant. I think your package that you propose, J.Y., with Mikhail and DeAndre and maybe Cam Johnson in picks is a lot more realistic. I think the Wolves were smart to say no to that, although they did you know, give up the chest for Rudy Gobert. You know what it's like, bro? It's like if you try to play NBA 2K and your team's really good, and you're like, yo, let me think of the most crazy trade I can <laughs> do to make my team better. And then you turn off the trade GM so that no matter what yeah. you do, the trade goes through. That's what the Nets were trying to pull with Minnesota. Minnesota, good job. Brooklyn, god damn. That, that, that weed over there up in the BK must be nice <laughs> because y'all smoking if you think you're getting that deal off. Yeah, man, that was a crazy trade. The only player who that might be worth, John Shames is my player. Best 2K guy of all time. Keep it right here, betting above. Ooh, get it, Shames! Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. 
Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The morning after. Almost feels, Jim, at times we are already seeing a two-team race for the American League pennant. Who do you think could be that third team to challenge either Houston or New York? The Astros and the Yankees, my numbers do agree, those are the best two teams in baseball, not just the American League. But yep. I think if I had to pick a third team, I'd probably lean towards the Rays just because there is a lot of upside in the players that they have. The Sports Grid Network. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The early line. Over the past six weeks here, a plus 360 price. Jordan Alvarez here of the Houston Astros, a plus 550 number. Mike Trout, 12 to 1. Pete Alonso, the polar bear, at 14 to 1. Now, if we take a look at the overall standings here, they were the odds. Judd's got 30 home runs. Kyle Schwarber, 27. Alvarez, 26. Trout, 23. Obviously, the leader in the clubhouse is Aaron Judge, and he should be here. He's having a wonderful summer. Only on Sports Grid. All right, quickly here, JY, before we move on to some of the summer league action and notes that we need to know, catching up from this week around the association, I do want to get your thoughts here. James Harden, we find out, Coach, signs a, takes a $15 million pay cut with the sole focus, quote-unquote, of winning an NBA title next season with the Philadelphia 76ers, permits them to bring a guy like P.J. Tucker in and potentially have another move here in the tank. I love to see that from James Harden. You know, you, you walk the walk and, and as, as you talk the talk as well. I love to see J.H. backing that up. But, oh, I don't know if you're $15 million away from winning a championship there, buddy. Just my two cents on it, J.Y. Well, listen, as we talk about guys trying to go after that bag, I have to honestly shout out James Harden. Took $15 million less in order to get P.J. Tucker in. So I commend you for that. But what we really need is we need you to be in the best shape of your life. Because what you have done is you put all your chips to the middle of the table. You didn't go long-term extension. Your second year is a player option. So you can opt out of the deal and become a free agent. So what James Harden is doing is he's banking on himself to not only have a great year, but Philadelphia potentially line himself up to maybe win a championship. And if they don't, then he could turn around and maybe put himself – into free agency coming off a mm. better year. I expect him to have a really good year. He looks like he's getting in, in, in really good shape. I know they were hanging out with their boy Meek Mill, uh, the three of them. <laughs> but I, I, must, I must say, bro, I did see a little tweet come out by one Jimmy Butler, and he don't look very happy about those guys in Philly. Mm, 
maybe a little bit of jealousy, maybe a little bit of missing, missing his days back in Philly playing alongside Joel Embiid. Right now, Coach, the Philadelphia 76ers 14-1 to to win next year's NBA title. Right there, they're right behind the Miami Heat actually at 12-1, to and then a massive gap between them and the Denver Nuggets here at 24-1. to So it's interesting to keep our eye on the Philadelphia 76ers if they make another move here now that they have a little bit of cushion as it relates to the cap. But let's spin it around real quick here, and we're going away from free agency into some actual game action and some of the things that we saw this week in the Las Vegas Summer League where all the NBA dreams come true early on, some guys making their names known in the early parts of their career. And that's what one Jaden Ivey did this week, cooking in his first game. 20 points for Jaden Ivey to go alongside six rebounds, six assists, nailing two three-pointers in the process. And you can see it there. For our radio audience, StatMuse says, fastest guy on the court. JY, no surprise there. And no surprise to see the Detroit Pistons alongside, uh, you know, with Jalen Duran alongside Jaden Ivey. They're booked at plus 650, the shortest price to win the Vegas Summer League here. Boy. Mm, 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 that boy good. Oh, no, <laughs> we told you that boy good. I know hey, listen, all you out. people, I, I, you, you, you put that thing on a tee, and I'll play golf while I'm Tiger. Hoods, not Tiger Woods, if you know what I'm saying. But anyway, I think the, with Jaden Ivey, I told people, he's Ja with a jump shot. I'm not joking, folks. This guy, take away the offense he played at, at Purdue. There's no Zach Eady or Trayvon Williams down in the low block, and there's nobody like Matt Painter coaching him. Thank God for that. So his ability to get to the cup and score is going to be dynamic. But the guy that's going to benefit also in summer league is Jalen Durham because he can put himself on the weak side block. He can get O boards. He can catch lobs. I'm telling you, folks, Sadiq Bay's on the roster. Killian Hayes is on the roster. Stewart's on the roster. And Cunningham's on the roster. We don't know if they're going to play at all during summer league. But I'm telling you right now, if there's a team that should be the team to beat in Vegas because of the number of collection of young players they have on there, it's the Detroit Pistons. JY, how does that translate to regular league, I should say, regular season or, or NBA league success, right? When you have all these young players, we know the Pistons are a team that's kind of up and coming here. How much stock do you put into these summer league performances, knowing that you also have guys like Sadiq Bay and Killian Hayes back there who are, you know, who have made some regular season impact already, especially Sadiq Bay. And then we can't forget Marvin Bagley coming over to the Pistons this season. I think he played very well for them, JY. He really gave them that inside presence and frankly outplayed Isaiah Stewart towards the end of the season, who I think his, uh, you know, his, his prospect has dropped off a little bit from where it was. But I still think overall the Pistons core is something to be very excited about. How, how can you not be excited by that core, with that back court? You know, with Sadiq and Bagley in the front court, maybe Stewart. And then you got guys like, we haven't even talked about Diallo. We haven't talked about the fact that they brought in Alec Burks and Nerlens Noel from the Knicks hmm. for bench depth. I'm going to say something to you folks. Listen, when the, when the numbers come out to make the playoffs, put your money on Detroit Pistons to make the playoffs. Dwayne Casey is also one of the best coaches in the league. He's been around for a long time. And the reason why sometimes, James, you put all these young kids together in summer league is this, to get them together and win. Let them taste success early on so that when they get into you know, training camp, they're ready to go. Maybe they play more minutes than normal in the preseason. Why? To get their rotation set, to make them feel good about themselves. I'm telling you, folks, Detroit has something here. If they could stay healthy. If they can stay healthy, and it's always a big if in the NBA, K takes that leap, you get Ivy, you got Bay and these other parts. I'm telling you, folks, I actually do believe the Detroit Pistons will be in the NBA playoffs next year. I think that is a fantastic take, JY. And even this year, they really showed flashes, I think. You have Cade Cunningham, you have Sadiq Bay. Sadiq Bay had 50 points in a game this year in his second season. So, something I'm certainly keeping an eye on in that Eastern Conference is the Detroit Pistons. And 
On the other end of things, JY, the Orlando Magic, I don't know if I see them doing very well this year, nor the Houston Rockets, but we did get to see Paolo Boncaro and Jabari Smith, the one and third overall picks in this year's NBA draft, duke it out in a summer league showdown. Boncaro finishes with 17 and six to go alongside four rebounds. Jabari Smith, only 10 points and seven rebounds there. Three assists as well for Jabari Smith. Coach JY, again, looking at these summer league performances, I'm not concerned. I don't have my antennas up because Jabari Smith is only scoring 10 points here, especially when you consider the Houston Rockets summer league roster is plus 5,500 to win the summer league title. So not a whole lot of talent there, making it easy for Jabari Smith. But, you know, Paolo Boncaro, no surprise to see him coming out, scoring 17 off the bat. He is basically as polished as they get coming out, I think. I I think the best thing about him, James, is his ability to create off the bounce is what I like the most about his game. Uh, Had one move, drive to the basket, turn, stop, pull around Jay, going over the right shoulder which is hard for a right-handed shooter. We always like to go over our left shoulder to shoot. So some really good moves out of Paulo. And he's going to be, listen to me, Cole Anthony. Yo, my man. Paulo, Wagner. Those are the top two scoring options. I know you nice, son, but those are your guys. Now, back to our regular schedule of programming. So he'll get the, the attempts. So 15, 16, and 8, 17, and 9. You can absolutely see that out of Paolo Bencaro. A guy like Jabari may take a little bit more time, not as aggressive offensively. But when you got guys like Green and Kevin Porter Jr., you know, you got guys that want to get some shots up. Shingun would be better. Long process. What they're going to need from Houston is they're going to need Ty Ty Washington to take the reins at the point to get these guys involved. But if you're asking me who's going to probably have a better rookie year out of the two, it should be Paolo Bencaro. Yeah, I agree, Coach J.Y., and I think uh, the the importance of playing with a great point guard cannot be understated, too, and I think that's exactly what we're going to see in Oklahoma City as well, and with Chet Holmgren specifically, he obviously had a massive debut, Coach, in his summer league game and turned a lot of heads this weekend, finishing with 23 points for Chet Holmgren to go alongside seven rebounds, four assists. How about six blocks, six swats? for the big man coming out of Gonzaga and then nailing some three-pointers as well. I think when he plays alongside Shea Gilgis-Alexander and Josh Giddy in that backcourt, those are guys that are going to be able to get Chet set up nicely. If he has that pick-and-pop game working as he did in that summer league game or even somewhere close to it, I think he is going to be a dangerous, dangerous player in this NBA. And no surprise to see him then as the plus-360 favorite to be Rookie of the Year after that stellar performance. James, it's all going to depend on one thing, injuries. Well, two, Mm -hmm. load management. If they are going to play this kid 30 minutes a night, you know, for 75 games, oh, he may win rookie of the year because his game is freakish. I'm telling you, folks, he made a move in the summer league first game. I closed my eyes, and I swear to God, I thought I saw Kevin Durant. Catch, Mm -hmm. one dribble, pull, stop on a dime, high release. Can't block it. Then you see him on a defensive end, you're like, damn, that looks a little bit like Giannis, where he could block shots, rebound, lead the break himself. So now it's about expectations, and can he rise above them, and can he keep himself uh, from, not, from getting hurt? Because I'm going to tell you something, it's a man's league, and he got a boy body, and they're going to try and body that guy inside. So it'll be interesting to see how Oklahoma City deals with him on the defensive end of the floor. But I'm going to say something, Shames. The way that Giddy and uh, Big Boy have looked, Chet, could Oklahoma City package SGA to load up on more picks and look at where Banyama and next year's draft? I wouldn't put it past them. Mm. Stay tuned. Me either, Coach. They, they are always playing the long game down there in OKC. That is what they do best. We'll take a look at some other free agency things around the NBA. Keep it right here, betting above the rim. Sports Grid. 
your 24-7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to ABG, coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game pass. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game, oh, live, man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. One earned run, eight strikeouts. Can you believe the way this guy is pitching again? It reminds me of Clemens at the end of his career doing the same thing, where you, you, you could honestly see a scenario, Scott, where Verlander just wanted to pitch 20 games a year and just join a team in April and May for the next five years. He probably could do it. That's how good he's been this year. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Yeah, I think the key thing for this week is to wait to fill it out fully until qualifying takes place. Because again, we want to skew towards drivers starting further back. Those guys are going to have big potential here because you should be able to make passes. There should be a lot of chaos during this race, which does lend itself towards drivers starting further back having a big red. So in general, our preference should be to use drivers starting further back. Only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. All right, we are cooking here a Saturday morning, betting above the rim. John Shames, James Young, Shames and James show here on Sports Grid TV. And we talked a little bit about the summer league in the last segment and some of the action that you can catch up with on a daily basis here during these off-season months for the NBA. And I, we, we talked a little bit about some of the futures there, and we know the Pistons at plus 600, some decent value to win the league just because they have such a stacked roster from a depth perspective. But JY's got his eye on another team here. So, JY, the floor is yours. Where can the people find the edge here when it pertains to Summer League futures? So, when you look at Summer League futures, everybody, you want to look at teams that are going to play their young kids and give them big minutes, Okay. And sometimes the teams that are playing second-year guys minutes as well that need more seasoning. That's why you see a team like Detroit is the favorite right now because of Josh Giddy. That's why Oklahoma City is the second favorite. But the team I'm looking at right now, Indiana at 10-1. to 1. Why? Because they're playing Matherin, who had a really good first game uh, last night against Charlotte. But... It's that they're playing Jackson. Nembred's going to give some minutes. Duarte, who I loved coming out of Oregon as, you know, a, a 3 and D guy. Plus, Dwayne Washington Jr. coming off the bench. So that's a team that's playing guys that are drafted this year 
and last year, as opposed to a team like Orlando that doesn't have Wagner and Suggs. Well, Oklahoma City has Giddy. So it's and then but Houston doesn't have Green and Shungun. So when you start looking at who to bet on to win Summer League, you gotta look at it as a two-year window. Last year, this year, how many of their top young players are there? And then that's where you look to go bet. That's why I like Detroit, but I also like the Indiana Pacers. Benny Matherin, coach, I'm happy you mentioned him there. He is coming out playing well, maybe better than people expected him early on here to be an impact maker from day one. His rookie of the year odds are plus 1,200 right now, a pretty large drop-off from the favorite at Chet Holmgren, plus 360 for Chet. We can see some of these other odds here. Palo is there at plus 440, Jabari plus 550. Then you have Jaden Ivey at 7-1, to one, Coach. I'm sure that's a number that catches your eye. It certainly catches mine. Keegan Murray might be the best player in the NBA, Coach. No one has looked as good as Keegan Murray has in his first couple summer league games. He looks absolutely incredible. And I'm not sure, you know, when you bring in DeMontis Sabonis into the mix, not sure what Keegan Murray's shot volume looks like, but he looks like a very polished offensive player who's ready to make an immediate impact. When I show you this Rookie of the Year uh, list, coach who who catches your eye as a potential value pick for the rookie of the year market i'll be honest with you it, it's it's benny matherin the way he looked um my concern is when he drafted him was like well you you already have duarte and you have benny matherin well, how does this fit oh well how about you play them both together at the two and the three hmm. benny can get his shot if he can shoot the ball the way he shot that's going to help him he's going to get the flushes and steals and get out of transition and score so Benny Matherin right now at 12, the one I like. Keegan Murray, I am concerned about Sabonis because you know one thing, Sabonis is going to get his. So is De'Aaron Fox. <laughs> so is Davion Mitchell. So that gets my concern with a guy like him. I liked Johnny Davis, but then you saw what happened. Beal resigns, and his odds go down. Now he are up, I should say, to now 27-1 to 1 to win Rookie of the Year. So you can't really find a lot of guys past – maybe that top six um, to, to maybe look and win it. If you want a flyer flyer, like you think I'm crazy, Malachi Branham. Hear me out. DeJounte Murray's gone. The one thing Malachi Branham can do is get a bucket. I mean, that kid can mm. score. And if you surround him with the right point guard, he's going to get shots. Pop will make him play D because that's what Pop does. Every year I try to find someone at 50 to 1 or worse and say, you know what? I'm going to put a couple of bucks on them because I think there could be a chance. Well, if you look at the situation over there in San Antonio with Murray being gone, they're rebuilding. It's Kelvin Johnson, and then this kid could be the number two scoring option. I'm telling you, folks, look at Malachi Branham, and I'm going to give you one other guy long, long, long away, Tari Eason. Looked really good in some league so far for Houston. They need junkyard dogs. And the kick could secretly score. Think of Matisse Thibel with an offensive game. If this kick could score and get the ball, especially if Jabari's not like there aggressively, Tari Eason, 100 to 1. Take a look. Joe, hmm. an excellent, excellent look there. Finding some hidden spots of value. And, you know, the rookie of the year, I think we know that it really <laughs> pertains to who comes out as the most ready or, or towards the most ready and making that immediate day one impact. But there's some guys who take a minute to come into their own and maybe even a season or two, as you mentioned there. So, Joe, I want to direct your attention to the most improved player of the year odds for this upcoming season. Your favorite right now is Anthony Edwards, who is a very, very impressive rookie and sophomore in his own right. And now he's poised for yet another massive season here in Minnesota playing alongside Rudy Gobert. He's at 12 to 1, RJ Barrett 14 to 1, Jalen Brunson 16 to 1. I am a little shaky on the two of them being right there back to back next to each other. I think it's kind of you pick one or the other. Tyrese Halliburton, Cade Cunningham. A lot of guards on this list, JY, and then you do have a couple of wings and forwards with Ann Edwards and Zion sprinkled in. But here's a look for you, JY. Anthony Simons, he fits the guard theme, but Anthony Simons is my guy and my value pick at 27 to 1 
for Anthony Simons, who will be the starting shooting guard alongside Damian Lillard, who will be back and healthy, getting his attention on him. And Anthony Simons this year, coach, had one of the most slept on seasons I think we've seen. He just got a massive payday. His team, he's got a massive role in line for his team, and that kid can score the ball. I love Anthony Simons. 27 to 1 for most improved next year. Bro, I, th I thought you were going with your guy. I was like, oh, he's going to say it. You know who's my first guy? Don't laugh. Robert Williams at 30 to 1. Why? Because I do think he should be and could be defensive player of the year. We'll get to that soon. But Robert Williams, I do think can be a 15 to 16 and 10 to 11 rebound game guy with steals, with blocks, can guard pick uh, pick and roll switches. So I love Rob at 30 to 1 to have a chance to win um you know mo uh, most improved player. The other person don't sleep on we just talked about the team watch Keldon Johnson this year. Without DeJounte Murray, folks, he's at 36 to 1. Late in the year, he was getting about 20 21 points a game. I expect Kelvin Johnson to be a 23 to 25 point a game score for San Antonio this year. So if you like Flyers, because I think this is one of them you take a chance on, look at Rob Williams at 30 to 1, look at Kelvin Johnson, 36 to 1. Love both of those, JY, and you know I love the Rob Williams pick, and I, would, I wanted to say it, but I had to go with something that was not a homer pick to start things off, but like you said, a real chance to win the Defensive Player of the Year, so let's look at these odds for Defensive Player of the Year next year. Right now, Rudy Gobert is the favorite. He's at plus 350 right now, to, or I'm sorry, plus 650 to win Defensive Player of the Year, his new home with the Minnesota Timberwolves, one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA last year, and Rudy Gobert is the favorite to win Defensive Player of the Year, Coach. How the hell does that work? I, I don't know. I don't know. But big, big, big French bad guy ain't getting it done this year. You know, <laughs> Bam is a decent play. I, I like Rob Williams. I like young guys here, okay? Rob Williams, 9-1. to one. Don't even get into it. Wasn't Mikel Bridges? Mikel. Mikel Bridges. You know, the one that plays for Phoenix, not the one that plays for Charlotte, whatever. Mikel Bridges at 14-1. to one. I like that because I think he's a great defender, can block shots, guard multiple positions. But how about Miles Turner, 27-1? to one? I, I know. He gets injured a lot. But you can't argue he's probably the best rim protector in the NBA, when healthy, better than Rudy Gobert, better than Mitchell Robinson, better than a lot of these guys. So look at a guy like Miles Turner and get himself healthy at 27 to 1 to win Defensive Player of the Year. Coach, I love that. And I also really like Anthony Davis on that list at plus 1,300. I feel like we are due for a massive Anthony Davis bounce back season. I mean, the guy went from being without question a top five player to you can make an argument that he's not even top 20 or he was not top 20 or top 25 last season, even when he was healthy. So I'm looking at Anthony Davis to potentially bounce back in a big way. And coach, that also extends to the MVP market. Anthony Davis is 65 to one to win the MVP next year. That is a crazy amount of value, in my opinion, right now. Of course, he's playing alongside LeBron James. But Anthony Davis, in LeBron's first season in L.A., put up very big numbers in his own right. And I think we saw him in the playoffs take on a major scoring role as well. So I would not be surprised if Anthony Davis is not only the leading scorer or close to the leading scorer for the Lakers next year, but he makes that defensive impact that puts him in contention for both the Defensive Player of the Year and the regular season MVP award, J.Y. No, and I agree. And we need a big bounce back year out of Anthony Davis. And let's be honest, people are questioning this dude. Me being one of them. He just doesn't play enough. And, you know, what's your legacy going to be here, bro? Like, we need to see you on the floor. Because when you're on the floor, you are one of the five best players in the NBA. The problem is we don't see you there enough, consistently enough, to put you there. So when you look at the MVP market, there's two names that stick out to me. Okay, and I know I'm going chalk. It's KD and it's LeBron. 
if LeBron turns this thing around with the Lakers, this is his last shot to win the MVP, and a 30-1, to there's a chance. And no, Kevin Walsh did not talk me into this. This is me thinking <laughs> about this on my own. Shout out to you, K-Dub. Um, the other one is KD, another guy, because people are, are talking about this guy, about what's going on in Brooklyn, how he's handling himself. And you know what the one thing that he's done instead of fighting with people on social media like fans? He's not talking. And sometimes you don't talk, that means you're about to do something. And if I'm Kevin Durant and I just watched Steph Curry win a championship, and I'm like, damn, like I left and they got a chip, and I'm sitting here floundering wherever I go. If I go to Phoenix, psh, y'all better load up. If I go to the Warriors, hey, I'm coming. Yeah. So look at KD at eight and a half to one, and that could be a person that's going to be extremely motivated this season. I think that is an excellent look, JY. I have always been on the Durant MVP train for the past couple of seasons since he joined the Brooklyn Nets, of course. Really not been healthy enough thus far to really be in the real conversation for that. But I do agree with you. He's going to come out somewhere next year with some vengeance. And quickly, JY, I know we only have about 30 seconds here. Luke Kennard is your NBA Sixth Man of the Year favorite right now. Or no, he's not. Jordan Poole seems to be. I'm not sure why Luke Kennard is at the top of that list. But Jordan Poole, plus 470 to be the, fi- to be the Sixth Man of the Year next year. Luke Kennard down there at plus 2100. So some of the interesting numbers that we can take a look at later on, JY. But coming up after the break, it's something we've all been waiting for. It's you, big dummy, the off-season edition. Keep it right here. JY's gotten something spicy for us after the break. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on SportsGrid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. The early line. But the summer league, one of those things that was always a little oddity a few years back, but now certainly in the limelight will star players on the court and also star players showing up in Las Vegas to watch from the stands. We take a look at yesterday, Paulo Bancaro, 17 points. And the joke to me here is, you can't say this guy can't play, this guy can play, this guy's going to be rookie of the year, but that's what we do in the summer. And that's what the fascinating part about it is. Only on Sports Grid. The Pat McAfee Show. Here we are, Wednesday, July 6th, 2022. Baker Mayfield is going to... <gasps> The Carolina Panthers. Wow. 
congrats to the Carolina Panthers, who for another season are taking a shot on who is going to be our franchise quarterback. And we will run the carousel until we find our guy. Maybe it's Baker. Shout out to the Queen City. The Sports Grid Network. All right, betting above the rim here. End of hour one, our second half tip off coming on the other side of the upcoming break. But we got a glorious two minutes right now. Maybe the best two minute block of the entire show because it's time for you, big dummy. JY, who is the winner this week? Please let us know. Let, let me explain something, folks. When we do this, I usually go after, you know, athletes or, or general managers. I try to keep other media personalities out of it. But I got to do it this week. Shout out to Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Might as well be Jared Bayless and Sterling Sharp. You know why? You clowns had a damn comedy show trying to figure out which bridges is who. What, name your bridge. Which one was it? Mikel? Is it Miles? Is it Michelle? Is it I, what bridges? Todd Bridges? Scott Bridges? Well, it doesn't matter what bridges it is, because you two knuckleheads spent 40 seconds on your show not knowing who was who. So listen, yo, my, my guys, look at me real quick. Ready? Miles Bridges went to Michigan State, plays for Charlotte. We're not going to talk about what he just did. Mikel Bridges went to Villanova, plays for for Phoenix. You got that? I mean, I know y'all make all that money and y'all sit on them bags and me and James are sitting and sleeping on cots, but damn it, we know who these guys are in the NBA. So if you want to go on these big four-letter and three-letter networks that spit that four-letter and three-letter amount of garbage y'all spit <laughs> on most of the time, then you need to know what player is on what team. Get it right, homie. I love y'all. Hey, listen, I want to be like y'all. But I'll tell you what, if I get in that big boy chair, I ain't going to mess up the Bridges brothers. You got it, you big dummies. Boom. Big dummies, a plural there. I could not believe they messed that up, JY. That's like someone mixing up shames and James. You just can't do it. We'll be right here after the break. Hour two, betting above the rim. Shame. 